put the cell centre and four jaw chuck back on and I've put the piece in, the blank piece for the spinner protector and you can see it's running there within within a thou really which is not bad. I find a high point which is there. And give it a little knock and made it worse. High point there. And within a thou that's the high. And it's within half a thou that's good enough for me. This layer's metric, put the thread on there, that's a thread I've got to cut, that's imperial. I've got a thread gauge in there, and it's actually 6 threads of the inch, 6 TPI. Right, 6 threads of the inch, that's a good fit in there. I can't cut 6 threads of the inch on this lathe by changing one or two gears in the gear train, and I've got a conversion chart. Right, I've measured the thread, I've rooted down on here, it's quite handy to write on there. Use a water based marker like a flip chart marker and it just washes off. Uh, the thread's definitely 6 TPI. The major size of the thread is 94.5mm. The minor part of the thread, that's the root of the thread, is 886 And the length of the thread is 15mm. So we've got 6 threads of the inch. 94.5 is that diameter. It'll be a, an impure, but I'm going to do it in metric. 94.5. And that diameter there, which is the base of the thread or the root of the thread, is 88.6, and I need 15mm of thread. I know this was fairly near the size of my machine at the first place. I'm getting 95.5, and I want 94.5, so it wants 1mm off it. Measure it again. Chuck and run as true as arrows that you know, that. That's dead on size here, 94.5. Now we we'll need the 15 mil for the threads on there and that piece machining down to 88.6. Right, I've measured the 15mm from the face of there to the start of the cut. I'm going to use a tool that way and it'll leave a nice chamfer on the back side for the, the thread to run into or the, to finish the thread off. Swore for the lay, I think. That's 88.5, it's a tenth of a mil on now, which is you know, there really. Right now it's a case of setting the lathe up and cutting the thread on there. This Harrison lathe is fully metric. That's one of the reasons I've started machine uh, metric sizes. So to cut the six thirds of the inch nut, I've had to put the conversion gear in. The gear on I've got, I've got a 50 tooth gear on there. That 50 drives a 63 in there, which is one of the gears I made. That's connected to an 80, which drives a 120. 
That's what they call a compound gear train. It's not a direct drive. There's a, a, a ratio between that gear and that gear there. That allows me to cut this imperial thread. The lathe's got a Norton quick change gearbox. The chart I've got to show what gear set to put in the back also tells you where to put the tumbler and where to put the various selectors to enable us to cut the six thirds of the inch. So basically the lathe's all now set up to cut that thread. Before I actually cut the thread, I'm going to put a little marker pin in here and do a dummy run just to mark that then I can measure the thread to make sure it is actually cutting six thirds of the inch. We'll put the lathe in gear, start it up, engage the half nuts. Right, and that's putting a mark on there. Not a very good mark, but it's putting a mark on. Right, I'll put a new pin in. That's better. Right, so now we can measure that thread, and hopefully it will be it is six threads to the inch. Very good being to see that there. That's better. Okay, so now we're cutting the correct thread. That's what cutting a whip wire thread, which is 55 degrees. We need to alter the angle of the compound slide to 27.5 degrees, which is half the angle of the thread. Okay, that's 20, 5, 6. 27.5 degrees. This is the tool I'm going to use to cut the, the thread with. It's actually a bit of high speed steel on a boring bar that I use for internal threading, but it'll work externally just the same. The tool must be perfectly on centre height. I'll do that next. Right, so obviously the tool needs to come down quite a long way. That looks better. Right, we'll settle for that. Right, next thing is the tool must be at 90 degrees to the job, square to the job, not like that, not like that, but absolutely square to the job. To do that we use a little tool called a fish tail. Probably because it's like a fish's tail. That's accurately cut to fit on the tool because you use it as a jig as well when you're grinding the tool. That's simply That touches onto the job and then you can move the tool the tool can be moved like that on the tool post until it's absolutely in the centre of that V Which it is there. The tool's touching the, the job. Right, so that's everything set up basically to cut the thread. First thing we do was turn in the compound slide until it's just touching the job, which is there, then we'll zero that. I'll also zero the DRO just in case we're 
across that one and see with the compound slide as well the cut's going to be put on with a compound slide which means that the tool will only be cut on one side if you try and put the tool straight in you find it takes a real heavy cut on both sides which is not ideal this lathe being metric it has got a thread dial indicator but what I'll be doing is once I engage the half nuts to cut the thread I won't be disengaging them until the thread's cut I'll have to reverse the motor Right, so everything's set to go, we'll start the lathe up the, the tool's actually just touching the job so if we engage the lead screw it should start to cut the thread which it is once it gets to the end of the thread I'm fortunate I can disengage the clutch then I will wind out the cross slide reverse the lathe Reverse, that's quite handy. Back into four again. Take this back into zero and put a little bit of cut on with a combo. I'm just going to measure that again just to make double sure. Perfect six thirds of the inch. So we cut on the front edge of the tool. Well, it's now five to ten. It's New Year's Eve. I'm going to go and open a nice bottle of red wine. I've left this all set up, ready to take in that cut. Hopefully, I'll get this thread finished tomorrow and get some video done for tomorrow night. Once again, it just remains to say thanks to everybody for supporting my channel, for clicking the like button but especially for all the well wishes that are still coming in towards my wife Deb and my dad, it's absolutely fantastic. I'd like to take this opportunity as well to wish everybody, no matter where you are, what part of the world you're in, all the best for the new year. I really do hope 2017 can be a year that we'll be proud of. Thanks for watching.